Welcome, 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 everybody. Thank you for joining me this evening. Hello to you, LaShonda. Hello, Pastor Bobby. Hello, Jen. Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining me this evening. Um, as we um, go into the Word and, and worship, I am so excited about the Word of God. Thank you so much, LaShonda. Appreciate that. God bless you. I am so excited about um, the Word of God and this Word that God has truly given me. I know that it's an in-season Word. It's an on-time Word. It's a right-now Word. It's a Word that we can all use. In fact, all of God's Word is Word that we can use. It's news that we can always use. But I love how strategic and specific God is when He speaks to us. And so I'm very excited about this word on prayer this evening, and I know it's going to bless your soul. And not because of me, but because of God, the one who has given me this word to bring to you this evening. And so I am super duper excited um, about this word from the Lord. It's powerful. All of God's word is powerful. But I'm excited, and I'm ready, and I'm grateful to God for choosing and using me and for allowing me to come before you this evening and for allowing you to join me in the word of worship. I love fellowshipping with other believers. I love it when we all come together in Jesus' name because we, when we all come together in his name, don't you know something amazing always happens? Something miraculous always happens. Something powerful always happens. So I hope and I pray that you have come today in confident expectation of the Lord. Because if you did, you will not be disappointed. You will never be disappointed with God. He always delivers. He always delivers. And so we are going to um, begin by going right into prayer. Um, I love praying to the Lord. And um, I love that this message is about prayer. I love how it's going to, to get us and keep us on track in our prayer lives. And I love how God always inclined his ears to the righteous. The Bible says that the prayers of the righteous, God hears. Don't you know that if you are living right before God, that he hears your prayers every single time? He says that his ears are inclined to the righteous. And so we righteous people... We can pray to God about anything. We can pray to God about everything. We can pray to God at any time, at all times, whenever we feel like it. I love that prayer is communication with God. I love that God is available 24-7. He's always on the line. He's always on call. Isn't that amazing to have a God? God is always on call, always on duty. And so we are going to go boldly before the throne of grace today. And we are going to go boldly before the throne of grace in faith. We are going to go boldly before the throne of grace with the spirit of thanksgiving. We're going to go boldly before the throne of grace in humility before the Lord. So again, thank you for joining me. I see my husband says, hi, hon. Hi, honey. Thank you for joining as well. And so we are going to jump into prayer and get right into the word of God. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. My soul just rejoice before the Lord because he is mighty and he is worthy and he is God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father God, we come before you humbly today, O oh God. Hallelujah. Humbly and boldly and courageously, O oh God, and before your throne of grace. And Father, we come before you in faith and in confident expectation of who you are and all that you can do. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you that the prayers of the righteous avails much. We thank you that the prayers of the righteous you hear, oh God, every single time. Father, we thank you that you inclined your ears to our prayers. And so we can come before you rejoicing. We can come before you praising, oh God, and thanking you in advance for all that you are going to do on behalf of the petitions 
and the supplication and the requests that we make known unto you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we ask you right now, Lord God, that you, Father, will search us out this evening. Search our hearts, search our minds, and our ways, oh God. And Father, whatever you find in us that's not like you, oh God, deliver us right now and lead us into the way of everlasting life. Lead us in the way of righteousness, holiness, and in truth. Father, we want to come not only humbly and boldly before your throne of grace. We want to come righteously, Lord God. So, Father, hallelujah. Father God, cleanse our hearts. Purify our hearts, oh God. Create in us a clean heart. And renew the right spirit within us, oh God. Father, rid, of, rid us of anything in our lives and our hearts. In our minds, oh God, that's not like you, oh God. Father, we don't want any distractions this evening. We don't want any hindrances this evening. We don't want anything to serve as a distraction or an obstacle before us this evening, oh God. Father, we need you and we need to hear from you. And so, Father, we thank you that the pathway has been made clear, oh God, that there is nothing, oh God, standing between us and you today, right now, oh God. Father, have your way. Father, let your spirit and your peace, oh God, and your presence reign in our midst, oh God. Father, be ye glorified, oh God. Have your way, Holy Spirit, and do what only you can do before us, within us, and through us, O oh God. Father, bless everyone right now under the sound of my voice. Those who will hear this message later, O oh God, I pray in advance for them. And Father, I pray that their ears, O oh God, will be open to hear what you're saying, O oh God. I pray that their hearts will be ready and ripe. And in the position to receive, oh God, with meekness, your engrafted word, which is able to save our souls, oh God, and make us wise unto salvation. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you that you are in our midst right now, oh God. Holy Spirit, we thank you, oh God, that we are being consumed by your presence, oh God. Have your way, oh God. Show yourself strong and mighty on our behalf, Heavenly Father. Speak to our spirits and quicken our spirit man with your word on today, oh God. Father, I thank you that your word shall not return void, but it's going to accomplish everything that you send it forth to do, oh God. And Father, under the authority of the Holy Spirit, and in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I cast down every stronghold, I cast down every thought, every Every imagination and everything that exalts itself against the word, the knowledge, the truth, the wisdom, the ways of God, the wisdom of God in our lives. And that shall come forth through your word today. Oh God, I bind every distraction. Hallelujah. Everything that has consumed the mind of your people, everything that's disturbing them, everything that's distracting them, everything that the enemy has sent to deter them from the faith. I come against it in the name of Jesus Christ and I cast it down every stronghold right now. Oh God, every negative thought. Oh God, every every ounce of doubt and fear, anxiety, and worry, and, and unbelief. I come against you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We are free, oh God, in you. And in you, Father, we have liberty and we have victory. You said whom the Son set free, he is free indeed. And so, Father, we are free in you. Now, Father, I decrease. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, that you may increase. I decrease that you may increase. Let it be none of me, but all of you. And in all that I do today here in word and in deed, Father, you be glorified. Father, you be magnified. Hallelujah. In the earth as you are in heaven, O oh God. Be ye glorified, Father God. Hallelujah. To you, O oh God, we give the honor, we give the glory, and we give the praise, O oh God. Because you are worthy of it, O oh God. 
and you are deserving of it. And so, Father, we rejoice over the word that's about to come forth. And we rejoice over the, revel over the revelation and the clarification and the understanding that we will receive today from your word. And I thank you, oh God, that this word is going to take us from glory to glory, from strength to strength, and from faith to faith. I present myself, oh God, as your servant. Hallelujah. Use me, God, for your glory. Use me for your good pleasure. Oh God, I thank you for choosing me and using me in this hour and in this season, oh God, to deliver your word in boldness and authority and in power. It is to you, God, I give the honor, the glory, and the praise. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. My God, Woo, glory to your name, God. Mm. He's worthy. God is worthy of the honor, the glory, and the praise. Every praise belongs to God. Every praise belongs to God. My God, give God the praise. Give God the honor and the glory that he desires and he deserves. We are going to be talking today about consistency in prayer consistency in prayer with all the things that are occurring and happening and going on in the world today and not only just in the world but in our personal lives in our families and on the job and so with all these cares of life and cares of the world and the many things that we are facing and dealing with in the public light and on a personal level, sometimes it's a challenge to maintain a life of prayer. But know that you can. Know that you can still maintain a lifestyle of prayer. And I'm here to talk to you today about consistency in prayer. And if you have been struggling lately in your prayer life, if you've had a couple of days to go, you have not prayed to God. If you've been struggling to try to stay on track with your prayer life, you've been wondering why and how to just maintain your consistency and faithfulness in the prayer. This word today is going to bless you. It is going to renew and transform your mind. It is going to provoke you to greater works in God. And in prayer, this is a powerful word. And I'm super excited to teach it. We are going to be coming today from Daniel chapter 6. Daniel chapter 6. I don't know about you, but I don't want anything to interrupt my prayer life. Anything, anybody to interrupt my prayer life. And as much as we desire that, sometimes things come along the way to do just that. But after today, we are going to be more persistent and vigilant about our prayer lives. It is very important that we maintain consistency in our prayer lives. Because if we don't, we're going to give up. The Bible says men are to always to pray and not faint. And if you don't pray consistently... And if you don't maintain a lifestyle and attitude of prayer, you are going to faint spiritually. You are going to faint emotionally, mentally. Prayer affects our whole being. And when prayer, you pray and you pray consistently, prayer is going to supercharge your life. And it's going to change you. It's going to change you. I'm telling you. But anyways, we're going to jump right into it. And we are going to come from Daniel chapter 6. Daniel chapter 6. One of my favorite, favorite narratives in the Bible. And it reads, It pleased Darius to set over the kingdom 120 satraps, to be over the whole kingdom, and over these three governors of whom Daniel was one, that the satraps might give account to them so that the king would suffer no loss. Then this Daniel distinguished himself above the governors and the satraps because an excellent spirit was in him. 
I can't wait till we get to that part. My God. And the king gave thought to setting him over the whole realm. So the governors and satraps sought to find some charge against Daniel concerning the kingdom. But they could find none because Daniel had an excellent spirit. They could not find no charge or fault because he was faithful. My God, he was righteous. He lived a holy life. And nor was there any error of fault found, found in him. Then these men said, we shall not find any charge against this Daniel. Ooh, this is powerful. My God. Unless we find it against him concerning the law of his God. So these governors and satraps thronged before the king and said thus to him, King Darius, live forever. All the governors of the kingdom, the administrators and satraps, the counselors and advisors have consulted together to establish a royal statue and to make a firm decree that whoever petitions any god or man for 30 days except you, O king, shall be cast into the dens of lions. Now, O king, establish the decree and sign the writing so that it cannot be changed according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which does not alter. Just a side note. The law of the Medes and Persians could not be altered for no reason under any circumstances. So once the king signed it, that was it. It was a wrap. It could not be reversed. It was irreversible. Therefore, King Darius signed the written decree. Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, whoo, my God, he went home and in his upper room with his windows open, Daniel didn't even try to hide. Towards Jerusalem, he knelt down on his knees three times that day and prayed and gave thanks before his God, as was his custom since early days. Then these men assembled and found Daniel praying and making supplication before his God. And they went before the king and spoke concerning the king's decree. Have you not signed a decree that every man who petitions any god, a man 30 days except you, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions? The king answered and said, this thing is true according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which does not alter. Now, remember, I told you that the law of the Medes and Persians is irreversible. So even if the king wanted to change this, he could not because he had signed it. And it was sealed. So they answered and said before the king that Daniel, that Daniel, who is they said that Daniel, who is one of the captives from Judah, does not show due regard for you, O king, or for the decree that you have signed, but makes his petition three times a day. And the king, when he heard these things, was greatly displeased with himself and set his heart on Daniel to deliver him. See, they tricked the king. He didn't realize it was Daniel they were trying to set up. That's just how the devil works. Look at the enemy. And he labored, the king labored to the going down of the sun to deliver Daniel. Then these men approached the king and said to the king, Know, O king, that it is the law that made these Persians, that no decree or statute which the king established can be changed. So the king gave the command and they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. My God. But the king spoke saying to Daniel, your God, whoo, your God, God hears the prayers of the righteous. Your God whom you serve continually, he will deliver you. Somebody needs to hear that today. Somebody needs to hear this right now. The God whom you continually serve, that God whom you faithfully serve, he will deliver you from whatever it is that you're going through. Nothing is too hard for God. Then a stone was brought and laid on the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet ring and with the signets of his lords. And the purpose concerning Daniel might not be changed. Now the king went to his palace and spent the night fasting. It's amazing when the king fasts for you. That's power. The king is fasting for Daniel. And no mus musicians were brought before him. Also his sleep went from him. 
Then the king arose very early in the morning and went in haste to the den of lions. He wanted to check on Daniel. And when he came to the den, he cried out with a lamenting voice to Daniel. The king spoke, saying to Daniel, Daniel, servant of the living God. Woo, I like that. Has your God whom you serve continually, there it is again, been able to deliver you from the lions? Then Daniel said to the king, oh, king, <laughs> live forever. That's how they greeted the king. That's how they responded. Oh, king, live forever. My God sent his angel and shut the lion's mouth. Woo, let me tell you, see, God knows how to deliver you. He didn't bring Daniel out of the den, but he sent some angels to take charge over Daniel. The Bible says that the angel of the Lord is in camp around those who fear him, those who obey him, those who continually and faithfully serve him, seek him, and pray to him. God sent angels, whoo, my God, and shut the lion's mouth <laughs> so that they have no, have not hurt me. Because I was found innocent before him, my God. And also, O oh king, I have done no wrong before you. I Daniel said, I did nothing wrong. Now the king was exceedingly glad for him. He was exceedingly glad for Daniel. And he commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den. And no injury whatever was found on him. Because he believed in his God. Did you just hear that? No injury. I don't care what you're going through right now. No injury. No danger. No disease. No plague is going to come nigh upon you. Because you believe in God. Woo! My God. Thank you, Father. And the king gave the command. And they brought those men who had accused Daniel. And they cast him into the den of lions. Let me tell you, vengeance, vengeance belongs to God. <laughs> Woo! My God. He says, vengeance belongs to me and I will repay, says the Lord. Don't give much time worrying about your enemies, the plot and the scheme of your enemies, the enemy, devil, Satan, demons. Don't give into that because God says, vengeance is mine and I will repay, says the Lord. Cast them in the den of lions. Them, their children and their wives and the lions overpowered them and broke all their bones in pieces before they ever came to the bottom of the den. The same dish that they dug for Daniel, ha <laughs> ha, they fell in it themselves. Let me tell you, let people keep digging their ditches because you won't be falling in it. They're going to fall in that very ditch that they're digging for you. They will fall in it. That's why they dig in one ditch. That ditch is not for you. That ditch is for them. Then Darius wrote to all peoples, nations, and languages that dwell in all the earth. Hallelujah. Peace be multiplied to you. I make a decree that in every dominion of my kingdom, men must tremble and fear before the God of Daniel. For he is the living God. Woo! My God, my God, my God. And steadfast forever. His kingdom is the one which shall not be destroyed. And his dominion shall endure to the end. I love this part right here. I want to try and maintain myself and con con contain myself. But it says, he delivers. Woo! My God. And rescues. My God. God delivers and he rescues. And he works signs and wonders in heaven and earth. Who has delivered Daniel from the power of the lions? So this Daniel prospered in the reign of Darius and in the reign of Cyprus the Persian. Look at that. Consistency in prayer. Pray without ceasing. That's what 1 Thessalonians 5 and 17 says. It says, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. So in other words, it is the will of God, it is the command of God for us, the desire of God for us to have a consistent, consistent prayer life, for us to be consistent in prayer. And we can do it. If we couldn't do it, God would not have said it. He says, this is my will. My will is for you 
to maintain a consistent prayer life. Colossians 4 and 2 says, be persistent and devoted to prayer, my God, being alert and focused in your prayer life. See, some of us are unfocused in our prayer lives. Even when we're praying, our mind is all over the place. We're trying to figure out what we're taking to work to lunch to, for, for, for lunch tomorrow at work. We're trying to figure out what we're going to put on tomorrow at work. We're trying to remember what I forgot to do today or what I need to do tomorrow. When we pray, we should be focused on nothing but God. Our focus in prayer shall be on nothing but God because he should be the center of our focus at all times and everything and especially in prayer. It says being alert and focused in your prayer life with an attitude of thanksgiving. It's time that when we go to God and pray, it's time for us to stop complaining about all of our problems and just begin to thank God for his promises. Thank God for his provisions. Thank God for his blessings and his word and his authority in your life. Go to God thanking God, knowing that God is in control and the outcome of your life and your situation rests in the hands of God. God has the first word and the last word in your life. He has the first word and the final word in our lives and even in this world. So when we pray, we should be focused in our prayer life. It says in Romans 12 and 12, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing, continuing steadfastly in prayer. I want to emphasize that as much as I can during the remaining of this message. God wants us to be consistent in prayer. Jesus himself, who is our model for prayer. He prayed earnestly. He prayed faithfully. He prayed consistently. Jesus prayed genuinely. He was serious about his prayer life. And this is how we all to pray. Listen, don't say you're too busy to pray. None of us will ever be as busy as Jesus was when he walked this earth. And if Jesus, the son of God and God himself in the flesh, made time to pray, we are without excuse. We are without excuse. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Prayer is very important for every reason. Prayer is very important. Prayer is our line of communication with God. Have you talked to God today? Prayer is our line of communication to God that should always be open and accessible and clear. That line of communication should not be clogged. And sin and disobedience and rebellion, all, pride, all of these things can clog up your line of communication to God. All of these things can clog. It's time that you unclog the line so that you can get through, that your prayer can get through, so that your conversation with God can get through. Keep the lines of communication open between you and God because the truth of the matter is God will never close the line. But the line can be clogged or we can hang up the phone or we can pull the plug. Keep the line of communication between you and God open. Keep it clear. Keep it clean. Keep it accessible so that you can always call on God because God is always on the line. Stop putting God on hold. See, a lot of us have clicked over the line to put God on hold. We're on a three-way call, a two-line two lane call. You know, when you are on the line with God, nothing else matters. Keep the line of communication open to God. It's that line that should always remain open and clear. Prayer is communication. It is talking and listening to God. Something we need to learn about prayer is that when we pray and we talk to God, we need to be quiet and listen. It's just like you and I having a conversation. If I'm doing all the talking and then you don't get a chance to talk back so that I can listen, that's not a two-way conversation. Even with God, communication is a two-way street. And so when you pray to God, don't be so quick to just pray or jump up. Spend a few minutes to listen to what God is saying. Maybe the answer that you needed, God was getting ready to give it to you, but you prayed and you left. You didn't give God time to respond back to you. So don't be in a hurry and so rush, so rush, rush. When you're praying to God, pray to the Lord. Let that be yours and God's time. Talk to God and then listen and hear what God has to say to you. My God, listen and hear what God has to say back to you. 
And so prayer is communication, talking and listening to God. It is intimate fellowship and relationship with God. That's just how important prayer is. Prayer is intimate relationship and fellowship with God. Prayer is a talk with God that includes praise, petition, supplication, thanksgiving, interceding, and confession. Prayer has so many different components. There's so many different components of prayer. Prayer also is an act of worship. We need to keep that in our spirit. Prayer is an act of worship. Hallelujah. It's intimacy. It's discipline. That's what prayer is. We need to understand not only the importance of prayer, but the meaning and the purpose of prayer, the power of prayer in our lives. Prayer is a commandment and God's will for us. Prayer is a commandment and it is God's will for us. Jesus told the disciples in Luke 18 and 1, he says, men are to always to pray and not faint. Let me tell you something that all of us can probably attest to. When our prayer life is slacking, we're slacking. When you're, when you're slacking in your prayer life, you'll begin to notice that you're fainting. You're acting all kinds of ways. You're not as encouraged. You're talking wrong. You're acting wrong. You need to start living wrong, right? So the moment we start to, to decrease in our prayer lives, it will be the moment that we increase in our fleshly lives. And so it's very important that you maintain a consistent prayer life. The Bible says, Jesus said it, men are to always to pray and not faint. Now, that doesn't mean 24-7, you're just going around. He means to be consistent in your prayer life. And we're going to talk about that. What does it mean to pray without ceasing? It means to pray faithfully, to pray earnestly, to pray consistently, and to pray persistently. It means to not abandon your prayer life, regardless of your situation, your circumstances, or your challenges. To pray without ceasing means... This is what it means. It means to not abandon your prayer life. And that's what many of us do when we start going through something. We may start off praying initially, but after a while, we don't pray anymore. When things are going good, we hallelujah, thank you, God. You know, God is everything to us until God is not doing what we think God should be doing. And so to pray consistently means to pray Without abandoning your prayer life. Do not abandon your prayer life. Regardless of your circumstances and situation. He, Jesus says men are to always to pray. It says pray without ceasing. Not stop praying when things are not going your way. It means to pray and commune with God during the good times, the bad times, and at all times. That's what it means to pray without ceasing. It means to pray no matter what's going on in your life. To still pray to God. Whether it's a good time and a different time. Whether it's a bad time, he says pray without ceasing. That means we are to pray at all times. And that's what it means to pray without ceasing. Daniel did it, Jesus did it, and we can do it. Amen? There's no excuse. And see, what I love about prayer, what I love about prayer, there are elements of it. So you can tell a person who has a prayer life. And oftentimes, the Bible says that those things that we do in secret shall be revealed. That doesn't necessarily mean bad things. When we hear that scripture, a lot of people think it's, you know, sinful things or hidden things. But the word of God says that those things done in secret shall be revealed. God said, what you do secretly, I'm going to reveal openly. So if you have a prayer life, people will know. And oftentimes, you know, you hear people, I pray and I'm doing all this prayer and I'm thinking, I would love to see some, some fruit of that prayer life because you're doing all this praying but that you're the same person you were yesterday. You had the same nasty attitude you had yesterday. What are you praying about when you go to God? They say prayer changes things. That's true, but prayer changes you. It should always start with you when you pray. It should always start when Jesus was in the garden of Gethsemane. He began to say, Father, if it be at all possible, remove this cup from me. He says, nevertheless, not as I will, but your will be done. And prayer conformed Jesus to the will of God. And when we pray, we should be saying, Lord, conform me to your will, Father. Whatever your will is, for me in this situation, Father, let your will be done. Instead of always praying about the problem, the circumstances, the situation, God is not oblivious to what we're going through. But prayer should be changing you 
Prayer should start with you. Father, change me. Let this prayer do a work in me, Father. Let it conform me to your word, to your ways, and to your will. Prayer should always begin with you. And so, Daniel, elements of a, of a consistent prayer life. So, let's just look at this Daniel. So, you can tell Daniel had a prayer life. First of all, Daniel said in, in, in Daniel chapter 1, in verse 8, he's, the Bible says, Daniel refused to defile himself. And what that means is that he refused to eat the king's food. And not because the food wasn't good food, but the food had not been prepared according to the law. And not only that, the food that the king presented before Daniel had been offered up to idols. So a person with a prayer life, they're not going to delve in everything. They're not going to get up into everything. They're not going to sit and eat at everybody's table. They're not going to be hanging out with all kinds of people. They're not going to be going with the crowd. Daniel says, listen, I'm not going to defile myself, and I'm not going to dishonor God. So Daniel refused that. So when you got a prayer life, there's, there's some attributes of that. There's some fruit of that. There's some elements of a person who has a prayer life, and these elements are evidence. They are evident. It was clear to me in just reading about Daniel that he had a prayer life. That he had a consistent prayer life because Daniel said, I will not defile myself. I will not eat of the king's delicacies. I will not act like the world. I will not interact the world. I'm in it, the world, but I'm not of the world. And so I will not defile myself. If you have a prayer life, prayer will keep you from presumptuous sin. Prayer will keep you from wanting to roll with the crowd. Daniel had a consistent prayer life, and it was evident because there were elements, and not just elements, there were fruit of his prayer life. Also, the Bible says that Daniel had an excellent spirit. He had an excellent spirit. That means he had a humble spirit. He had a teachable spirit. He had a submissive spirit. He had a commendable spirit. He had a com an admirable attitude. People who have a consistent prayer life, they don't have nasty attitudes. Oh, 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 I will say that again. People who have a consistent prayer life don't have a nasty attitude. They don't have a nasty disposition. They don't have a nasty demeanor. And so that's why when you go around telling people how much you pray and you're being nasty, people are looking at you like, okay, <laughs> yeah, right. It's right. It's, it, there's a blue elephant in the room. When you have a prayer life, there are attributes of that. There's a manifestation of the fruit of the spirit in that there are elements. Jesus said that these signs shall follow those who believe. He said, you will know them by their fruit. You will know people by their fruit. So if you got a prayer life, I'm going to see the fruit of that prayer life. If you're living holy, I want to see the, I want to see the fruit of your holiness. If you're saying you're a child of God, I want to see the fruit of that. I want to see the fruit of the spirit being manifested and being made evident in your life. And so let's not say we have these beautiful we have prayer, prayer lives and we're praying in the closets and, and behind the house and all this stuff, but yet still you have a nasty disposition. Those are not elements of a person who has a consistent prayer life. The Bible says that Daniel had an excellent spirit. He was distinguished. He was distinguished. In other words, he was different and he was unique and he was okay with that. And that's one thing that we need to do as believers. We need to embrace our uniqueness. The Bible says that we are the light of the world. See, we were created to stand out, not fit in. We were created to stand out. And not fit in. The Bible says we are fearfully and wonderfully made. God says great are the works of my hands. We are unique. And we need to learn how to embrace our uniqueness. But because Daniel had a, an excellent spirit, he stood out. And we can even acknowledge people and, and notice people who have an excellent spirit. There's something different about Daniel. There was something unique about Daniel. And these were all the result of the type of prayer life that he had. And when you have a consistent prayer life, it does something to your spirit. Daniel had an excellent, excellent spirit. And he was disciplined. And he was faithful to God. Faithful to prayer. And he was faithful to his assignment. <laughs> Something just came to my heart. Many of us go into the job, our jobs, and we wonder why. I'm just going to do enough. To, I'm just going to do my job and go home. I'm not doing nothing more. And I'm not going to do nothing less. That's not an excellent spirit. The Bible says, remember who you work for. He said, work for it. He said, whatever you do, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, knowing that it is him whom you serve. It is him who you work for. Stop going on your job and doing just enough to get by. Because as long as you have that attitude, you will never get promoted. Not on your job and not in the spiritual realm. 
Remember that you work for God. It is him whom you serve. Change your attitude. Maintain a spirit of excellence. And begin to walk in consistency in your prayer life. And that alone will change your attitude. It will change your mindset. When you go on your job, you do your very best. And you do whatever it takes to please the Lord, knowing that it is him whom you serve. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Daniel was faithful. And he was faultless. He was faithful and faultless. Does that mean he was perfect? No. But that means that he lived a righteous life. He lived a holy life. So they tried to find something on Daniel. They couldn't find anything because Daniel lived holy. As long as we just keep living righteously and living holy before God, people can dig for stuff. They're not going to find anything. They try and trip you up. The least little thing you do, they try, you're under the microscope. They're trying to critique. They're trying to criticize. But they will not find nothing. They will not find anything. I remember the late Bishop C.E. White would say, don't give the devil the stick to beat you over the head with. <laughs> so watch how you conduct yourself. You're going to always have critics and fault finders. And this is something I have to remind myself of. But as long as I'm living holy and righteous before God, they can look all day long. They're not going to find nothing. They're not going to find anything. Don't give the devil the stick to beat you over your head with. So Daniel was faithful and he was faultless. He lived a righteous life. His reputation mimicked a person who had a lifestyle of consistent prayer and persistent prayer. Thank you, Father. It was evident that Daniel prayed. His lifestyle illustrated that and it demonstrated that. And we too ought to live a life of consistency, when it, a lifestyle of consistency in our prayer life. Be consistent in prayer. Everybody knew that Daniel had a faithful prayer life. The king knew it, the administrators, the governors, the sad traps, and that's why they all tried to mess with Daniel. The enemy does not like it when you pray because let me tell you something. When you have a consistent prayer life, you are a force to be reckoned with. Let me tell you, when you have a consistent prayer life, you are a force to be reckoned with. Daniel was very disciplined and consistent in his prayer life. And it showed. I, that's how I want to be. I want to be just like Daniel. I want to be so devoted and dedicated and disciplined in my prayer life that people can just look at me. I don't have to say a word and say, you know what? This woman must have a prayer life because she has an excellent spirit. Because she lived a righteous life before the Lord. A holy life. And she conducts herself in a manner, in a way that's loving. And in a manner, in a way that is pleasing to the Lord. That is my desire. And that's why every day I'm becoming more and more determined to make sure that I have a consistent prayer life. Prayer life. Daniel stood out from the crowd because of his prayer life. There's so much about that. Now we're going to talk about briefly before I close. How to establish and maintain a consistent prayer life. How to establish. If you don't have one, I'm going to teach you how to establish one. And if you do have one that's been a little rocky lately, I'm going to teach you how to get back on track and how to maintain a consistent prayer life. Number one, one of my favorite words, mine and Miss Katz, our favorite word, be intentional. <laughs> be intentional, be determined, and be willing and obedient the Bible says we're willing and obedient that we will eat the good of the land. So it, everything starts with the readiness and willingness of mind. Everything starts with the readiness and willingness of mind. You must be intentional. Daniel had purpose in his heart that he was not going to defile himself and he didn't do it. And if you purpose in your heart that I will have a consistent prayer life, you will have one. But you must be intentional. You must be insistent. You must be determined and willing and obedient to God's word concerning prayer. It starts with you. You can want it all day long, but if you don't, if you don't pursue it, it's not going to happen. So you got to desire it and you got to pursue it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. You got the purpose in your heart and in your mind that I will not only establish but I will maintain a lifestyle of consistent prayer. The second thing is you must designate and reserve personal and private time in prayer. You must 
designate and reserve it. You must make the time. We have 24 hours in a day. So it's not that we don't have enough time. It's just that we're not using our time wisely. We're, we're designating our time to things that are not profitable to us spiritually. Paul says all things are lawful, but not expedient. And I'm at a point in my life, it's not going to benefit me spiritually. First of all, I don't want no part of it. Everything you do should have a purpose to it. There should be a reason for it. There should be a benefit to it, a blessing that comes out of it. And so we must designate and reserve personal and private time in prayer. Daniel had a designated time and place to kneel before God. It says in verse 10, now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went home and in his upper room with his windows open towards Jerusalem. He knelt down on his knees three times that day and prayed and gave thanks to, before his God. He didn't complain. He prayed and he gave thanks before his God as was his custom since the early days. Daniel knelt down and that is something that I think we should get back to. Now, a lot of times we try to pray in the car on, on Highway 85 with all the traffic and people blowing horns and the noise. That's a difficult time. I'm not saying you can't talk to God while you're driving. But you need to have some designated time and have your designated place where you meet God and you talk to the Lord and you pray to the God, to God in private. Personal, private time with God. Daniel had a designated place and a designated time. He had a prayer regimen. He had a prayer routine. He had a prayer strategy. And so every day, Daniel did as he, he said, hey, I've been doing this. I'm not new to this. I'm true to this. <laughs> and so Daniel prayed to God. He designated a time and place in prayer. And Daniel knelt before God and gave thanks to him daily. Daily. Every day. Set aside some time. Find your quiet place. Away from the noise. Away from the neighbors. Away from the children and the spouses. Say, hey, I need a few, a few moments. This me and God. This mine and God's time right now. I need some time to go and pray to the Lord. Don't worry about what Sister Jones is. Sister Jones is a prayer warrior. She prayed five hours a day. Praise God. We need Sister Jones. And I appreciate having a Sister Jones that can devote five hours like that before God without moving. But some of us have a different type of schedule. And so if you, don't pray, if you don't pray five hours without moving, that doesn't mean God loves you any less. God is looking at not the, the um, quantity, but the quality of our prayers. He's not trying to say, hey, this person spent two hours, this person spent uh, 15 minutes. He's looking at the quality and the sincerity and the purity of our prayers. Amen? And so designate some time. Reserve some time to pray to the Lord. The Bible says in Luke 5 and 16 that Jesus oftentimes withdrew himself from the crowd, from the noise, from the disciples, from his, from his labor. He oftentimes withdrew himself and went to a solitary place in the wilderness, in the mountain somewhere he prayed. This is Jesus. And if Jesus did it, we are to do it. He is our model. He is our example that we are to follow. The next thing we are to do is to keep, the next thing is to keep your focus on God. Mm, 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 mm. That's important. Keep your focus on God. Don't allow anything, no anyone to distract you, to deter you, to discourage you, to disrupt your prayer life. Separate yourself from the noise, from the problems, from the challenges, from the crisis, from the circumstances. Separate yourself from these things and keep your eyes on God. It says Daniel turned his face towards Jerusalem. I believe that Daniel knew that they were watching him. In fact, he had to know. The Bible says he went to the same place. He didn't try and hide. He kept his window open and he sat before that window and they saw Daniel. That's how they knew he was still praying. Daniel was not focused on the critics. He was not focused on his enemies. He was focused on God. Hallelujah. 
He went to the same place at the same time when this window opened. And the Bible says that Daniel turned his face towards Jerusalem. And he began to pray to God as he had always done. It's time that we turn our face towards Jerusalem and not towards man, not towards government, not towards what's going on in this world, not towards our circumstances and our challenges and crisis and pandemics and COVID-19. But it's time that we follow on our knees and we turn our face towards God and we begin to call on the name of the Lord because God whosoever called upon the name of the Lord shall be delivered it is time that we ret we, 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 we retract and it's time that we, we steer our focus back on God where it belongs that's how you maintain a consistent prayer life because if you take your mind off God it's going to take your mind off prayer and your prayer life is going to be disrupted it's going to be disrupted. Keep your focus on God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I love what Daniel did. He turned his face towards Jerusalem and he began to pray. And the Bible says, when you pray, enter into your closet. And that closet may not be a physical closet. The revelation that God gave me for, for that is that when you, when you pray, he says, close the windows of your eyes and close the doors to your ears. So that nothing can get out. And keep your focus on me. Nothing can get in. When you pray, this is my closet. When I close my eyes. And I close my ears to everything that's going on around me. And even what's going on within me. And I begin to center my focus on God. I have now entered into my closet. That closet is a solitary, confined, quiet place. That only has room for you and God. Nothing else. And nobody else. That is the closet. Every day we ought to enter into that closet. Into that quiet, solitary, confined place that only has room for you and God. That's the quiet place that we need to get to every day. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Because if you're in a closet in your bedroom and you still got all kind of noise in your head, noise in the hallway, that is not, that's not going to do you any good. Because you're not going to be focused on God. But when you enter into your closet, you're going to close the doors to your ears and the doors to your eyes. And all you're going to focus on, thank you, Father, is the Holy Spirit of God. All you're going to center your mind and you'll fix your heart on is God himself. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Keep your focus on God. Daniel didn't simply pray as a result of the decree. Daniel's prayer was a continuation of his continuous and committed prayer life. Daniel's prayer was a continuation. It says but he, he gave thanks before his God and as was his custom since his early days. Look at that. Daniel didn't allow what the king had going on. He didn't allow what was going on in the kingdom. He didn't allow... All the chaos they had, the plot and the scheme. He didn't allow that to change his course of prayer. My God, don't allow all these things that's going on in the world today to change your course of prayer. Stay on course. Stay consistent in your prayer life. Don't allow these things to knock you off your path of prayer. The enemy is going to use everything that's going on in the world today as a distraction, as a determent, as a disruption of your prayer life. He knows that Prayer is a powerful weapon. He knows that there is so much power in prayer. He knows that prayer is a means by which we not only worship God, but that we will communicate with God and that we fellowship with God. Don't allow these things to distract you. Our light affliction is but for a moment. It's temporary. This too shall pass. But the glory of God is for all eternity. Keep your eyes on the Lord. Keep your mind on God. Don't allow these things to disrupt, to deter, or discourage, or distract you in your prayer life. Be consistent in prayer. Thank you, Father. Thank you, God. I have two more points to make, and I'm done. Next, I want to say choose God. Choose God. That's powerful. 
That may be simple, but that is powerful. Choose God. Choose God. Daniel heard about the decree. My God. In that moment, he could have said, oops, I can't pray anymore. Because the king has put out a decree and now my life is on the line. Daniel didn't care. He didn't care about his life being on the line because he knew that God is able to not only rescue him, but that God is able to deliver him. Choose God. Only he can protect you. Only he can preserve you. Only he can keep you in all of your ways, my God. Only God can rescue you. Only God can deliver you. Only God can heal you. Choose God and choose God every single time. Daniel knew that his life was was in God's hands. He knew that the king had no authority over him. In fact, Daniel had authority because Daniel belonged to God and Daniel had a prayer life and there is power in prayer. Choose God. Choose not to worry. Choose not to give up. But choose to seek God. Choose to praise God. Choose to thank God. Choose to rejoice in God. Choose to follow God. Choose to live for God. Choose to listen to God. Choose to serve God. My God. Choose to pray to God. You choose God. Because God has chosen you. Woo! Thank you, Father. Mm. Choose God. That's another way that we maintain consistency in our prayer lives. Mm. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your name, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. And in closing, thank you, Father. Woo, choose God. That thing is, woo, my, my, my. Choose God. Choose God. Choose God. Choose God. When something stops you from praying, you have chose that thing over God. When something makes you stop living holy, you have chose that thing over God. When something makes you stop serving God, you have chose that thing over God. I will say it again. You choose God. Choose God. Choose God. And that's how you will maintain consistency in your prayer life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. And in closing, in closing, in closing, I'm going to close now. I'm going to close now. Remember. Thank you, Lord. Remember that prayer brings victory. Woo, my God. Remember that prayer brings victory. Prayer brings power. Prayer brings peace. He says, be anxious for nothing. But in all things, through prayer and supplication, with the spirit of thanksgiving, let your requests be known unto God and the peace of God that surpass all understanding will guard and guide your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. Prayer brings victory. Prayer brings power. Prayer brings peace. And prayer brings promotion. Ha! <laughs> hey, the Bible says promotion doesn't come from the east nor the west. Promotion comes from God. Promotion comes from God. Remember that no plots, my God, woo, my God, my God, no penalty can stand against prayer. Woo, no plot, no penalty, not even a death penalty can stand against the power of prayer in your life. No plot, no penalty, no scheme, no trick. No wiles of the devil, no works of Satan can stand against the power of prayer in your life. The king said in this, in my closing of the scripture, the king says, Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God, whom you serve continually, been able to deliver you from the lions? This is what the king was asking Daniel. Then Daniel said to the king, O oh, king, live forever. No worries. My God. Woo, my, 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 my. This is Daniel talking. O oh, king, live forever. My God sent angels. He sent an angel. And he shut the lion's mouth. So that they have not hurt me. Let me tell you something. Because I, let me finish this first. Because I was found innocent before him. And also, King, 
I have done no wrong before you. There will be times when people say or do some hurtful things against you and you have done no wrong to them. I'm telling you what I know. I'm speaking from personal experience. But know this. Hey, thank you, Lord. If God sent an angel to shut the mouth of a lion to partake, Daniel, God will send an angel to shut the mouth of a liar to protect you. God will shut the mouth of your enemies to protect you. Keep trusting God. God will bring down your enemies right before your face. He will shut the mouth of the liars. He will shut the mouth of the gossiper. He will shut the mouth of the enemy. He will shut down their plots. He will shut down, down their schemes against you. He sent an angel to shut the mouth of the lie. You may feel like God is still in the midst of this situation. They're still talking. They're still lying. What lying? Why won't you bring me out as God? So no worries. <laughs> I'm going to deliver you right in the midst of the, of the situation. I'm going to deliver you right before their face. God delivered Daniel right in the face of his enemies. And then the tables were turned. They got thrown in the lion's den. They didn't even make it to the bottom. The lions made sport of them, the Bible says. The lions ripped them apart before they hit the rock bottom. So just know that what the enemy meant for your bad, what people meant for your bad, God meant it for your good. God will shut the mouth of the liars, the haters, the enemies, the naysayers, the critics, the gossipers. God will shut their mouths. And God is going to continue to protect you and preserve you from the enemy and everything that spew from their mouth. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Daniel said, now king, the king was exceedingly glad and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den and no injury whatsoever was found on him because he believed God. And when you believe God, no injury, <laughs> Woo! no harm is going to come nigh upon you because you believe God. And the king gave command. This is the victory I was talking about. This is the promotion I was talking about. This is the peace that I was talking about that prayer will bring to you. And the king gave the command and they brought those men who had accused Daniel and they cast them into the den of lions. Them, their children and their wives and the lions overpowered them. And broke all their bones in pieces before they came to the bottom of the den. Then King Darius wrote this, hallelujah, to all peoples, nations, and languages that dwell in all the earth. Peace be multiplied to you. I make a decree that in every dominion of my kingdom, men must tremble and fear before the God of Daniel. Woo, my God. For he is the living God and steadfast forever. His kingdom is the one which shall not be destroyed and his dominion shall endure to the end. He delivers and rescues and he works signs and wonders in heaven and on earth. Who has delivered Daniel from the power of the lions? So this Daniel prospered in the reign of Darius and in the reign of Cyrus the Persian. Maintain maintain consistency in prayer it is the will of god concerning me and you let us be intentional let us be persistent let us be vigilant let us be devoted to consistency in prayer consistency in prayer this is the word that the lord gave me to share with you this evening and this word is awesome in fact when I'm done I'm just gonna rejoice over this word even more <laughs> because it is it has truly um, blessed my soul and it has truly encouraged me today and has provoked me to greater works in prayer and that's why God sent me here before you today to encourage you and to provoke you to greater works in prayer. You can have a consistent prayer life. But it's going to start with you. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? It starts with you. Amen.
So I'm going to um, close in prayer. And I just want to take a few moments to acknowledge you guys. And I see, I see you guys. And um, God bless you, LaShonda. She says, it's been a blessing to me. God bless you, Miss Cat. She says an awesome word. Thank you so much, Miss Cat. God bless you. And Sonia, awesome word. I will continue to choose God. Oh, and Sonia, don't get me started, girl. Because that's still messing with me right there. Choose God. God bless you, Kat Katrina. God bless you, Miss Celia. Cheryl, thank you for joining. Angela, thank you. God bless you. Thank you so much for joining. Miss Liz, thank you for joining. God bless you. Jen, God bless you. Thank you for your love and support and prayers. Um, thanks to all of you who joined me um, this evening. If anyone has a um, prayer request, write it on the screen. I will um, include you in the prayers. I close out quickly this evening. If you have a particular prayer request that you would like for me, all of us to join together as believers because although I'll be praying the prayer, we're all here today and we're united. We are united um, in the spirit. God bless you, Dwayne. God bless you. Thank you so much for joining. Um, we're going to just join together. We're going to pray with and for one another. This was such a good word. <laughs> I love you, LaShonda. Such a beautiful word, powerful word. Woo! Consistency in prayer. But anyways, I'm not going to start over again. Anybody else? Um, if you have a comment, write it down quickly. Again, if there's a prayer request that you want us all to touch and agree upon, you know, put it out there. And we will definitely, we will definitely um, touch and agree in prayer. Isaiah and Miles both had surgery. Make sure that I pray for Isaiah and Miles. Amen. God bless you, Patrick. God bless you, sir. And thank you for joining me. God knows what we need. He is speaking, Patrick. Keep your spiritual ears open. God is speaking to you. And there is so much that he will reveal to you. He said, call upon me and I'll show you great and mighty things that you didn't even know. So you just continue to listen to God. He's always speaking. Just make sure you're always listening, Patrick. God is speaking to you. God bless you, sir. Healing for my family. I have Tawana. I'm just going to write these down. Kaden, Jordan, Bella. Wait, this stuff. I have some paper. Yay. Here we go. Angela. We got Kaden. Um, Justin. Bella. Um, Kaden, Justin, Bella. I'm missing somebody. Jordan. Okay, Angela. Okay, Doctor. A new house just recently moved. I'm gonna play for Patrick. Angela. We got Miles and Isaiah, I believe. I think I got everybody. And so as you guys, we have Miles and Isaiah to pray for. We have Patrick. Patrick just moved to a new house. Um, we have um, an appointment for Angela. She has tomorrow. We're going to pray for Angela. We're going to pray for LaShonda. We're going to pray for Jordan and Bella and Caden and Justin. I think I have everybody. So if I miss anybody out, please let me know. And know that if I do miss names, because sometimes the screen goes by fast, I always go back and look at all these, these comments. If I miss you now, I promise you I won't miss you later because I'm going to pray for you if I see anything there when I go through all the messages. And so let us, you know, let us be um, in agreement concerning these prayer requests that I'm about to take before the Lord. Because the word of God says that where two or three of us are gathered together um, in his name. When we gather together on earth concerning anything, any situation um, in his name, that he is there in the midst of us. And that we can ask whatsoever we will and it shall be granted to us by the Father. Amen. Thank you, Patrick. And so we're all here in agreement. And God hears us. The prayers of the righteous, he hears, right? He heard Daniel. He hears us. So let us pray. Thank you, Father. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for your word that came forth today, God. Hallelujah. We thank you that your word has penetrated and pierced our hearts. We thank you that your word has been planted in our hearts, O oh God, and as a result, it's going to bear much fruit. And Father, we thank you that your word that came forth today 
did not return back void to you because we receive it and we believe it, oh God, and we're going to apply it to every area of our lives. Father, help us to always choose you. Hallelujah. Help us to always keep our mind and eyes and heart fixed on you, oh God, to stay focused on you, Lord Jesus. And Father, help us to maintain, oh God, consistency in our prayer lives, oh God, because prayer is a powerful weapon that you have given us, oh God. It's a powerful weapon, oh God. You said the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds. And Father, this is a powerful weapon that you have given us. Father, help us to not be distracted nor discouraged nor disrupted, nor deterred, oh God, in our prayer life. But help us, oh God, to always pray to you, regardless of our circumstances, regardless of our situations, oh God, and the things that we face in this life. Help us to pray without ceasing, oh God. Help us to be steadfast in our prayer life, to be continual, continuous, oh God, in prayer, oh God, persistent, diligent, determined, vigilant, devoted, and dedicated, committed, oh God, to a lifestyle of prayer. For this is the will of God concerning us. And we thank you right now for your word concerning prayer today. Now, Father, we come to you in agreement. We're on one mind, one accord, and of one faith and spirit. And we come boldly, O oh God. We come thankfully, O oh God, and humbly before your throne of grace with our petitions and our prayer requests that we lift up to you right now. And Father, we thank you in advance, O oh God, that you hear us and that you will answer us, O oh God. And Father, we thank you that the manifest manifestation of our prayers will be evident, O oh God. And we thank you, O oh God, that you will answer us, Lord Jesus. We thank you for the miracles and signs and wonders that are going to, that are going to come forth, O oh God, as a result of our prayers to you. Father, we lift up miles, O oh God, and Isaiah to you right now, O oh God. Father, I pray that you will bless these two young men, O oh God. That you will prosper them, O oh God, in all of their ways. Father, that you would guide them, O oh God, in their youth and guide them, O oh God, in their lives, O oh God. Father, I pray that they will follow the path that you have for their lives. For, Father, you know the plans that you have for Miles and Isaiah, and that plan is to prosper them. That plan is to do them good and no evil, O oh God, all the days of their lives. That plan, O oh God, is to give them a bright future and an expected end. Father, I pray that they will follow, O oh God, the path that you have planned for them and the plans that you have made for them, O oh God. And Father, that you will go before them to make every path, make the crooked path straight and their path plain, O oh God. That you will remove every obstacle from their pathway, every hindrance, O oh God, everything that the enemy has set before them to serve as a distraction in their lives. And Father, I pray that you would continue to just bless Miles, oh God. Bless him academically. Bless him, oh God, um, spiritually, oh God. I pray that you would bless him, oh God, even in sports, Lord Jesus. Father, let him be distinguished like Daniel, oh God. Let him stand out, Lord Jesus. Don't, don't ever allow him to fit in anywhere where he doesn't belong, oh God, because he wasn't created to fit in, but to stand out, both Miles and Isaiah. Father, I pray, oh God, that you, oh God, would continue to promote Miles, oh God, and that everything he does, will prosper and that you will perfect all that concerns him and that you will bless his mother, Jeanette. You will bless her children, every single one of them, oh God, bless her family. And Father, serve as a constant reminder that you are with them and you are for them and that no weapon formed against Jeanette, her children, or her family will ever prosper. Continue to bless them and keep them in all of their ways. In Jesus' name, we pray. Father, I pray for Lashonda right now, oh God. Father, I thank you that her life, oh God, is in your hands. And Father, I thank you that you are upholding her with the right hand of your righteousness, O oh God. And Father, I thank you right now that health and healing belongs to her. Father, continue to preserve her body, preserve her health, and to keep her, O oh God, in good standing and in good health, O oh God, with you. Father, I pray that you will continue to prosper the works of her hand, O oh God. Father, that she will continue to remain in a place of prayer, O oh God, in a posture of prayer. That she will continue to look to you, the author and finisher of her faith, the, the, the heal from which comes her help, her help, comes from you. Father, we thank you for all that you're doing in Lashonda's life, even the things that she has yet to see, the things that, oh God, that'll be done, be, being done behind the scene in her life. Father, we thank you for all that you're doing for Lashonda. We thank you for the ministry and the testimony that awaits her, oh God. Father, continue to bless her and use her for your glory and your good pleasure. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Father, I pray for Angela tomorrow, today, right now, oh God. I pray for her as she prepares for her doctor's appointment tomorrow. Father, we're going to believe your report concerning Angela. Father, let her get a good bill of health concerning her doctor's appointment, oh God. Healing belongs to her, Lord Jesus. And I pray that it will go well with her tomorrow. And that even right now, this hour, it will be well with her soul. Father, we just thank you right now that you have already gone before Angela, oh God. We thank you that you're going to work through the doctors, oh God, through their minds, their hands, and hearts, oh God. As they sit down and talk with her, as she goes to be examined, oh God. Father, we thank you that you have already gone before Angela. 
and that you're going to perform a work, oh God, in her life. Father, we just ask that you would touch her right now from the top of her head to the soles of her feet. And Father, I call everything in her body that's out of order to come to order right now, God, according to your divine design and your perfect will concerning her life, her health, and her healing. So Father, we thank you right now and we rejoice rejoicing that you would give Angela a good report. Let it be well with her soul and let it be well with her body. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Father, I pray for Patrick. I thank you for allowing him to join us today, oh God. Father, I thank you for all the new things and the great and mighty and incredible things that you are doing in Patrick's life in this season. Father, I pray that you would continue to just prosper him and promote him, O oh God. That you would continue to draw him nigh to you as he draws closer to you. Father, I pray that you would just continue to order his steps with your word and your spirit, O oh God. You are his God and you are his guide, O oh God. Father, I pray that you said the steps of the good man are ordered by you. I pray that Patrick will continue to seek you out, O oh God. Hallelujah. He will continue to seek your face. And he will continue to follow the path that you have laid for him, O oh God. Father, I pray that you remove all obstacles out of Patrick's way, O oh God. And I pray that your favor will continue to rest upon him. That not only will he have favor with God, but he will have favor with man. Father, do a new thing. Continue to do new things in Patrick's life. And I thank you for the work that you're doing on the inside of him. And Father, you said that you are faithful to complete what you have started in us. And so, Father, I thank you for all the things that you're doing in Patrick's life from the inside out. May your blessings continue to rest upon him and your peace continue to reign and rule in his heart. In your son Jesus' name, we pray and bless him in his new home. Bless him in this, this, new, this new season in his life, oh God. Continue to perfect all that concerns Patrick. Now, Father, we pray. We pray for, we pray for uh, Caden. Thank you, Father, Holy Spirit. I thank you for Caden, oh God. I thank you for what you're doing in his life. Father, I thank you that right now that Caden will never depart from the faith. Father, you tell us to train up our children in the way that they should go, and when they get old, they won't depart. Father, I thank you that there's a hedge of protection around Caden. Father, I thank you that there are limitations and restrictions placed upon Caden's life. He cannot step outside of your rim. Why? Hey, he cannot step outside of your boundaries. My God, he cannot step far out of your plan and purpose concerning his life. Father, I thank you for the place that you are ushering Caden into, oh God. And Father, I thank you when he reached that place, oh God, that he's going to be stronger in you, greater in you, mightier in you. His trust is going to be placed solely in you, oh God. Father, I just ask that you would continue to cover Caden, oh God, and that you will prosper him in all of his ways, oh God. Father, I pray that you remove anything and anybody in Caden's life that should not be. Father God, there will be no distractions. In Caden's life, no interruptions, oh God. In Caden's life, bless him, prosper him. Keep him, oh God, and give him your peace. And Father, I pray for Justin, Lord Jesus. I pray for Jordan. I pray for baby Bella, oh God, that you will bless these children. And Father, I thank you for the teachings that they are receiving from their parents, oh God. And I thank you that these teachings are taking root in their hearts, oh God. And they, they're going to grow up and be mighty warriors, oh God, in you and in your kingdom, even in their youth, oh God. I thank you for what you're doing in Jordan's life, oh God. I thank you that she is distinguished. I thank you that she has a spirit of excellence, oh God. Continue to increase her confidence, oh God, in you. Father, help her to be confident in who she is in you and who she is on this earth. And that reminder that she is fearfully and wonderfully made, that she is the works of your hands, that she is unique, oh God. And she is designed just the way that you have called her to be, that she is a masterpiece, that Jordan Johnson is the works of your hands, oh God. I thank you for the young lady that she's blossoming into, oh God, and I thank you, oh God, that she has a heart that is fixed on you. Thank you, Holy Spirit, to continue to bless Jordan, Caden, continue to bless Justin and Bella, oh God, in every, in every way, continue to bless Monica and Katrina, the parents, oh God, bless their, their fathers, William, oh God, Bless uh, Jordan's daddy and bless Bella's father, oh God. Bless them all. Bless Miss Cat and Mr. Carl. Thank you for the pillars that they have in their lives, oh God. The grandparents even continue to bless them and bless this entire Parker family and the Burr's family, oh God. We thank you right now, oh God. The Means family, oh God, for what you're doing in the life of this family and all that you're passing down from generation to generation in this family. We thank you for the, the leaders that you've placed before them. And may you continue to bless them and keep them and guide them in all of their ways. So, Father, we thank you and we praise you right now. And we give you the honor, the glory, and the praise for these things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for joining. 
Thank you for um, praying with me and believing God with me concerning all these prayer requests that we have made unto the Lord. They are all now in the hands and plans of God. So God bless you. Have a wonderful evening. And I look, time, look forward to our time together next week, week in the word and in worship. I love you all and God bless you. Oh, and you can also find this on my YouTube page. And also it will be placed on my Facebook page. So be sure to go in and um, subscribe to my YouTube page and um, you'll be notified when new videos are posted. And the benefit of YouTube is that you can share with anybody, anywhere, at any time, even if they don't have Facebook. You can feel free to share. And also at any time, if you want to soar to my ministry, you're welcome to do so. You're not obligated to do so, but you are welcome to do so. I will also post my cash app information um, on my screen once I place this message, but I believe it's dollar sign Williams LD. Dollar signs, capital W-I-L-L-I-A-M-S, capital L, capital D. So remember, you are welcome, but you're not obligated. So God bless you. I love you all. And I look forward to our time again together next week.